Imagine you're dropped off in a foreign country, say Japan, without warning. You only speak English, and everybody around you only speaks Japanese. How would you survive? How would you order a coffee? Have a chat? Make friends? Hold a job? This is the daily reality for people with aphasia. Aphasia is a language impairment often caused by stroke, which is a disruption of blood flow to the brain. It affects a person's ability to speak, write, read, and understand what somebody is saying to varying degrees. This can range from having difficulty finding a word every now and then and understanding almost everything, to being unable to say any words and understanding very little. Now we've gotten very good at describing different aphasia types based on their language skills, as measured by language tests, such as picture naming or matching a sentence with the right image. Ultimately, though, speech and language therapy aims to improve someone's ability to communicate, to have a conversation. The problem is, is that we don't really understand the concept of communication very well, nor do we know exactly what kind of skills are required to communicate efficiently. So remember I told you you don't speak or understand Japanese? You'd score pretty badly on a test of your Japanese language skills, right? Yet I predict that you'd still be able to order a cup of coffee and have a chat with someone in Japan. Just as we see that some people with a very severe language impairment are still able to communicate quite efficiently. My research aims to find out what enables people with aphasia to communicate despite their inability to rely on their language skills. Now from people without, from research with people without brain damage, we know that in, in addition to language, there are at least three elements that people use when they communicate. One, we don't just communicate by using language. We use other means to transmit our message, such as gesture, facial expressions, body posture, and intonation, so the way we say our words. Two, communication is interactive. It doesn't just rely on my language skills, but also on those of the pers that I'm person that I'm speaking to and how they can help me out when I get stuck. Three, communication always takes place in a specific setting or, or context. So expressing a sudden urge for coffee is easier when you're next to Starbucks compared to when you're on a hike in the woods. By manipulating these three elements in the lab, I want to find out if people with aphasia can rely on these elements just like we do in our everyday conversations, or if it's different for them due to their brain damage. By getting a better idea of what communication means instead of just language skills, this can inform our therapies, our measures of communication, and hopefully help those who struggle to communicate every single day.